Hello. Hello, my fungi friends. Today we're going to look at Fungi Festival, the Fungi Film Festival, to be more specific, in the internet matrix. Because, unfortunately, I cannot go to the actual festival since it's so far away, but they have it online and so I'm going to look at it online. I need to start recording my screen because I haven't done that yet. So. The Fungi Film Fest is the world's only film festival dedicated to the beauty, weirdness, and the human influences of mushrooms, lichens, and microfungi. Films are submitted by people like you. Alright, so I actually have a fungi film that I made myself, oh, uh, made with a couple of friends uh, as part of um, an animation film that we we're doing. And. I didn't submit to this Fungi Film Festival, even though it seems perfect for it. I should have, but alas, I did not. So uh, I'm just going to get into watching it. Um, should I make myself a cup of tea first? Like a sugary, milky cup of tea? I might as well. So I'll, I'll be back in two seconds and go get my tea. I put honey, oh yeah, I said I put honey and milk in my tea. And it's in a Bob Ross mug, if you wanted to see. Uh, I don't usually drink milky tea with sugar, but I felt like I needed to pick me up, so I'm doing it today. I'm a gamer, did you know? I'm not actually a gamer. I, didn't, I, can't, I can't see anything with these on. Uh. very 80s or 90s. I don't know which era that is, but it seems like. Shroommates. How cute. My, my friends.
Osiris is gift. how simple it is it's very i love like one scene and you don't have much you can get it all done yeah dragon frame cool i love it oh another university film loads of people doing fungi films you know i want to do another fungi film but i don't know what, i don't know how to put it together yeah, i put it together yet so the next one N'est-il pas sain, à l'occasion, de laisser entrer en soi le hasard, l'inconnu? Un poison peut s'avérer être un remède, mais le remède est aussi souvent un poison. Ah, Dieu! Ah, Rien est seulement bénéfique. La preuve, le galeux! tout en frottant ses plaies sur un mur de briques, euh, ressent une, une douloureuse jouissance qui, tout en lui permettant de soulager sa maladie, ne, ne la soigne pas.
été réunis, ce n'est pas le fruit du hasard. C'est pas un hasard si on, on a les sens qu'on a développés comme ça, qu'on a l'intelligence développée comme ça. C'est on est là, sur la Terre, pour pouvoir se rendre compte de la beauté du monde. On a une stratégie du cosmos. Ça, là, tu vas être comme, come on, Ben, Ben, lève-toi, fais quelque chose. Ben oui, c'est facile. Parce que, Ben, mon Ben, tu vas y avoir pensé. Fait que ce que tu vas faire, ça va être juste. C'est comme ça que ça marche. C'est ça qu'il faut faire. C'est ça que le monde a besoin. Mais oui. Les lents. Un jour, nous vaincrons. Vous êtes dans un champ, c'est trop compliqué. Maintenant, t'es juste assis sur un siège très confortable. Ah. Hey. Tu sais, tu sais que les Vikings prenaient des champignons avant d'aller nous battre. Mmh. Ils étaient complètement éclatés puis il n'y avait peur de personne. Parce que ça donnait l'impression que tout le monde était tout petit autour d'eux. Je pensais à ça, ça pourrait être cool l'année prochaine, les Vikings. Moi, je m'embarque pas dans ce débat-là. Je 
sais pas ce que ça veut dire. Ah, c'est beau, un tabarnak. C'est un problème? Je sais pas, ça dépend, t'es qui? Le propriétaire du chalet? Ah non, non, euh, tout roule comme sur des roulettes, monsieur. Ben, j'avais dit pas de party. Ouais, puis moi, je viens de dire tout roule comme sur des roulettes, monsieur. C'est plate, je vais apporter deux biens. <rire> <rire> Je vais coucher petit, puis après ça, j'ai... À vous faire croire que je suis le propriétaire. <rire> Hé, hey, Leroux! Leroux! Quoi? Je pense que c'est le propriétaire! Qu'est-ce qu'il veut? Je sais pas. Il nous offrir de la bière. Yac! Vieux et dégueu. Non, ben, j'avais juste envie de, de boire un coup puis de faire du bon voisinage. Mm -hmm. D'être dans une longue oh, Qu'est-ce que, qu que vous faites dans le coin? Euh... Yeah, non, non, que, que, non, Vous êtes une gang de chums qui, qui jouent au hockey dans une ligue de garage. Bien, il a dit pour pas. Non, pas dans ligue de... non, le parcours du train-train quotidien pour venir triper en boys. Puis là, hey, qui sait? Hein? Ah. <rire> oh. Yes. C'est trop méta. Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire? Ça veut dire. <rire> oh! Oh, il y, 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 y en a d'autres là! Hé, <rire> méchant de belle gang! Hé! Hey! Ouais, hey, non, faudrait lui dire que je suis pas méchant, les autres là. là. <rire> hey, je suis pas. Je suis pas un tueur, Ouais, un prédateur sexuel. Ça. Euh, J'espère que je vous ai pas fait peur. T'es moi, je suis juste un gars curieux, là. C'est. Hein? En tout cas, bonne année, ça ne se revoit pas. <rire> Man, that would suck. That would suck so hard. Poor guy. Why is he still out there? He? Ah, see.
Oof. Because when you're on the trip and you don't really know what's going on, in a regular sense, and anyone that's like outside the group, you're like, who's that? What are they doing? It doesn't feel the same. Poor guy. Poor guy. He's injured and they probably won't find him.
Au début, il n'y a rien. Il n'y a que de l'eau, de l'eau. De minuscules molécules, cellules, micro-organismes se cognent les unes aux autres et forment des masses gélatineuses et phosphorescentes. Deux. Les métabolismes se complexifient. Dans cette soupe organique, les cellules s'auto-organisent et deviennent bactéries. Nous, algues, première plante, on se développe au fond de l'eau. On s'érige en forêt aquatique. On flotte, un peu énigmatique et un peu flippante, au fond de nuées océaniques bleu nuit. 3. Les eaux se retirent et les terres émergent. Des volcans au loin font apparaître de nouveaux espaces. Les algues se retrouvent étalées sur les côtes, au sec. Il faut trouver un moyen pour survivre. 4. Les champignons apparaissent. La surchauffe apporte son lot de nouvelles bestioles. L'algue rampe, croule depuis ses littoraux asséchés et cherche à s'allier aux champignons. La structure de l'un et la photosynthèse de l'autre. Ils font équipe et deviennent lichen. 5. Ce pacte entraîne la multiplication des formes de vie. Le réseau micellaire se développe et tout communique. D'immenses champignons poussent. Les algues envahissent tout. Ça fuse dans tous les sens. Grandes cohues et mêlées organiques. Les choses s'imbriquent les unes avec les autres. Tout est humide, éclat de voix, rencontre. On s'interpelle, on baise, on se reproduit à tous les niveaux. Les humains arrivent dans le tableau. Ils font équipe aussi autour d'un feu. Tout ceci à l'ombre d'algues, champignons géantes et prototaxites. Et ça fourmille encore. 7. L'homme, femme, se taille un morceau de champignon. Y elle goûte à cette alliance, imagine des utilités. Et son cerveau commence à vriller. En pensant avec son ventre, et elle devient fourchette. 8. Les villes champignonnent à leur tour. Les vapeurs d'hydrocarbures embaument les sols et les ciels. Les moteurs pétarades, les humains deviennent robots. Solo dans leur tour, seules les lumières électriques sont clairvoyantes. Les lichens s'éloignent des villes. Fracture. Histoire du Guémonier, seul sur son bout. Neuf. Il pense fourchette et il a faim. La fourchette devient objet outil, puis le peigne pour aller ratisser les fonds marins. Savon, verre, engrais, et puis cosmétique, pharmaceutique, alimentaire, l'algue, la tire. Avec ça, au fond, je dégomme des cailloux de la taille de mon pick-up. C'est la goutte d'eau. L'explosion des invisibles. Les fonds océaniques crissent. Les granites pètent. Le réseau micellaire le ressent sur Terre et les champignons commencent la révolution. Les agarites des trottoirs, gros champignons, démolisseurs, poussent sous le bitume des villes. Ils s'unissent pour percer et désimperméabiliser les sols. La revanche. Le géologue de la plage de saint anne Il a étudié les changements géologiques des côtes du littoral brestois. Ceci, au crible très particulier des roches ramenées expressément par les algues, accrochées dessus, sous le coup de la houle et de la marée. Les algues bâtisseuses érigent entre elles et la ville une muraille. D'immenses champignons emprisonnent et surveillent les humains sous les voûtes alvéolées, des satyres voilées, ou tisseurs de soie, le phallus, un du siatus. 11. Saut dans un futur proche, où tout s'est enfin un peu plus mixé que prévu. Algues, lichens, champignons, humains, végétaux, 
animaux. Toutes se sont fondues et donc ont un peu disparu. Le procès n'a pas eu lieu. Sure, I feel like I could have entered my Fungi Film Festival and made it. Maybe the next one.
gorgeous. You're really good at animation. Yo, what? I think I just saw something. Well, I saw the. There's this thing. What's it called? The dude from Gravity Falls, the pyramid guy. I saw him on the on the one of these like, candles here. But I saw something else. Cute little mushrooms. No way. That snail right there. It look. I mean, I guess it's quite a basic uh, model, but I worked with a 3D animation artist and it looks exactly like that. I suppose it's quite a basic model, so. Yeah. Come on, furry, get him. Yeah, get him out of there.
passion. Oh, sweet. Fiery and the mushroom. I want to be the mushroom. <laughs> uh, I think my audio stopped. India. A beautiful country in Southeast Asia is a region blessed with rich ecosystems and biodiversity. In the west of India, the state of Gujarat is a land of outstanding natural beauty. It holds a strategic position due to its dense forest and wide range of ecological diversity. Looking down from the skies during the monsoon, we see vast and dense forest covers of Gujarat. But underneath this cover, there is an equally dense, visible, fascinating, but unexplored world. Let me take you on the journey of this world. The world of a unique vegetation sometimes also known as the food from gods. This world is the world of mushrooms, a type of fungi. Gujarat is blessed and reported with a range of about 200 mushrooms and yet to be explored. People make use of mushrooms in the food and wide ranges of applications in terms of medicinal importances is also been employed. It is the nature's gift or rather the gift from the God to the human beings as no other animals are known to consume or dependent onto the mushrooms as per the literature survey. Mushrooms are fleshy, spore-bearing fruiting bodies typically produced above ground soil or on its food source. Mushrooms come in variety of different shapes, sizes and colors. Mostly, mushrooms are found in moist areas like forests, fields, tree branches and wastelands. Mushrooms benefit humans as they are used from food to fodder, side dish to the main course, vegetarians to medicine and as an alternative source of conceptual medicine. This Vasna mushroom, yo ami gharali jai jhan, ni sokai nae jhan, gharali jai jhan, ni tapma wow jhan, ni maga hunte na ye don tin di supyog hi kar jhan, ni doin maga an wat hi kar jhan, ni lambe time sudhi ami ti pit ami ti chalav jhan. Some mushrooms have also been an important revenue source for rural Gujarat communities. Beno mate aa sara ma saro udyog chhe pasu palan sathe mushroom ni kheti pan kari sakay chhe ane ghar betha aavak mali sake chhe. Although we all have seen or heard about the mushroom, very little is known about how it grows. Mushroom gets its uniqueness from two components, the spore and the mycelium, at the correct moisture, temperature and required nutrients, the spore from the mushroom body travel and sprinkle on the ground, forming the hypae. Many such hypae connect with each other to form the mushroom mycelium. This is where the magic happens and mushroom gets their dietary and medicinal qualities. Mushroom to bap dada thi ek hatai hua. 
જે બાપ દાદા અમને બતાવતા ગયે કે આ ખવાતી છે આ નહીં ખવાય આ ઝેરી આવે Let me show you these qualities one by one. Typically, we can find two types of mushrooms in the forest, edible and poisonous. Scientific base states that an edible mushroom is composed of 88 to 90% water, 4 to 5% protein, 5% carbohydrates, and the rest are minerals and vitamins. Mushrooms are usually considered a substitute for animal protein. They make excellent food for diabetic and heart patients. Mushrooms adorn an aesthetic taste, help improve health and help treat a few incurable diseases. Mushroom jo ek khadya padarth kudrati rite paida thatu hoy che ane manav jivan ne maltu hoy che. Aa mushroom એટલું બધું પ્રોટીન માનવ જીવનને પૂરું પાડે છે કે બીજી કોઈ પ્રોટીન માટે વસ્તુ ના લઈએ તો આ મશરૂમ આપણને એક પ્રોટીનના રૂપમાં મળી રહે છે મશરૂમ્સ આર મિનિચર ફાર્માસ્યુટિકલ ઇન્ડસ્ટ્રીઝ મશરૂમ્સ કુડ પ્રોવાઇડ ન્યુ એન્ટીબાયોટિક્સ એન્ટીવાયરલ એન્ડ ઇમ્યુન બૂસ્ટિંગ કમ્પાઉન્ડ્સ એન્ડ કેમોથેરાપીસ આપણે જમીનમાંથી મશરૂમ ટાઈપ જ પહેલાં બોલ જેવા હોય એમાં આપણે ચાંદા નીકળે કંઈ એમાં એમાં યુઝ કરતા છીએ ચાંદા પહેલાં રૂઝાવ માટે એનું પેલો પાવડર જેવું એમાંથી નીકળે એ અમે લગાવતા છે કલ્ટિવેટિંગ મશરૂમ્સ ઇઝ એન આર્ટ એન્ડ નેચર્સ હિડન મિરાકલ ટિપિકલી ફોર એની કલ્ટિવેશન વી વુડ રિક્વાયર ફાર્મ લેન્ડ હાવેવર A mushroom can grow over any suitable moist surface and grow at home. Many women from rural areas have started cultivating mushrooms in their courtyards. They are getting special training from different village level organizations after which they become independent and start growing mushrooms in a 21 day cycle. Atyar sudhi ma 1000 thi vadu khedut bhaiyo અને ખાસ કરીને મહિલાઓને તાલીમ મહિલાઓ તાલીમ મેળવીને સ્વરોજગારી મેળવતા થયા છે ટૂંકા ગાળામાં ઓછા ખર્ચે પૂરક આવક મેળવવા માટે ખાસ કરીને ગામડાની જે ગામડાના જે બહેનો છે એના માટે મશરૂમ ઉત્પાદન શ્રેષ્ઠ વ્યવસાય છે ધ મશરૂમ પ્લાન્ટ હેઝ અ યુનિક કેરેક્ટરિસ્ટિક ઓફ બીંગ હાર્વેસ્ટેડ ફોર થ્રી મંથ્સ કન્ટિન્યુઅસલી ધીસ હેલ્પ્સ ધ રૂરલ વુમન અર્ન લાઈવલીહુડ ફોર ધેર ફેમિલીઝ thus empowering them with their identity even though cultivated in rural areas mushrooms are present in urban regions be it in exotic dishes nutritional recipes healthy delicacies and medicinal benefits india mein vegetarian hai maximum log to bahut kam mushroom khate basically problem logo ko ye hai ki mushroom ka jo mouth feel hai wo bahut chewy hai to chewy mouth feel ke karan logo ko aisa feel hota hai ki wo non veg hai but mushroom is 100% vegetarian it is um, it is a fungi a fungi which is good for health to hota kya hai ki health to benefit hai hi taste bhi hai sath mein so as a food lover mere liye to mushroom ek blessing ki tarah hai My curiosity for learning about mushrooms has taken me to an unexpected and fascinating discovery of the visibly invisible world of mushrooms. Whenever there is rain, there will be fungi, and whenever there are fungi, there will be mushrooms. With their dietary, medicinal, and socio-economic benefits, I have realized that mushrooms are like nuts bowls and oil of a perfectly tuned machine of our nature's ecosystem although found as a monsoon gift this tiny fungus has in itself the constituent property of mother earth so reserve nurture and conserve them
They cry just like I cry, crying a lot this whole evening. <laughs> Let's continue on before I cry again. <laughs> Boom. Pew, pew, pew. Roślina, połącz, rozłącz. Łącza niedostępne, łącza nieprzychylne. Mycelium is sentient. It knows that you are there. Wie, czuje twoją obecność. Gdy stąpasz po runie, łaskocze twoją podeszwę. Nie śpi. Przeżywa glebę. Strumykiem życia się pnie wąskimi ścieżkami. Przecina struktury. Czuwa. Wobec zastanych struktur, ilekroć wtłaczam gorejącą limfę w nie, patrząc w oczy pulsującej grzybni, staram się nie opisywać rzeczy tak jak zastana rzeczywistość je określa.
Gąbczasta plecionka korzeni tworzy przytulną pościel dla mojego umysłu. Właśnie ona skusiła mnie w tę stronę. Przybywam. Niosę nie lada nowiny. Wasze wynalazki to przeżytek wobec absolutu natury. Każdy wasz ruch jest kopią, kopii, kopii w zapisanych parametrach wszechświata. Stąpam po waszej planecie i nie wierzę. Pycha mi się klej do butów. Staram się pouczyć choinki moim mikoryzatorem, jednakże odbywa się to niezwykle powoli, ponieważ tutejsze grzybnie do ufnych nie należą. Eony historii zapisanych w strzemkach. Rozsiewają zarodniki we wszechświecie, wróżąc lepszą przyszłość, gdzie, po co, dokąd zmierzasz. So, I believe the invention of the computer internet is an inevitable consequence of a previously proven biologically successful model. The Earth invented the computer internet for its own benefit. And we now, being the top organism on this planet, is trying to allocate resources in order to, to protect the biosphere. Myślisz, że masz mnie w klatce nauki. Trzymasz za rogi w programie Excel. Kosmiczny przekaz odbywa się online. Sieć mikoryzowa jest na tyle antyczesna, że nie potrzebuje nowych wersji. Absolutna w swoim pierwowzorze. Chcesz ją kupić? Otóż jest bezcenna. Crumble, fester, molder, ripen, seethe, putress, go bad. Whoa, whoa, that's crazy. I mean, I know what mold looks like, but... This language has a lot of words for rot. But is this due to appreciation or squeamishness? Words give voice to disgust, but disgust is slippery. Something that makes us feel queasy may not be dangerous. Though thinking about it can get us a bit overwrought. When rot creeps into our homes, it tends to spoil our fun. In a forgotten corner of the refrigerator, microbes once dormant begin to leap into action. 
but don't turn away in disgust. Come a little closer and see the universe that unfolds in these forsaken places. Bacteria drift like icebergs. And grow like snowflakes around seeds of dust. Spores, adrift and desolate, finally reach their promised land. Tender cell walls collapse releasing roiling torrents of water and sugars. Which then dry into shifting vistas for swarming microscopic life. Yeasts belch carbon dioxide into the swirling, cloudy atmosphere. Toothless molds gum their way through hard-shelled seeds, melting their potential into slimy mush. Watching this unfold, I am surprised as my revulsion is replaced by reverence. But when mold colonizes contested landscapes, staking its claim on nutrients I had saved for myself, I declare that things are going bad. And I might reach for the bleach, keeping rot at bay with antiseptic incantations for a while. But would rot, if called Mold by any so other beautiful. name, still reek? So many colors in it. <gasps> Ooh, fermentation. I want to ferment some stuff. Fermentation is Spoiling's cultured twin. The hopeful treaty between human and microbe that says eat this cucumber now so I may eat it later. Mm, pickles. Preservation through transformation.
This treaty has allowed many kinds of bodies, like yeast, wheat, and our own, to rise and spill across the earth in delicious collaborations. A taste for milk, shared by humans and bacteria, led to yogurt and cheese. Mmm, cheese. Some domesticated molds knit beans into nutritious tempeh. Others render barley and rice the fragrant catalyst for miso. Up close, the transformative power of these fungi appears more choreography than chemistry. Is it art? Bubbles rise and roil, a sure sign of the invisible spirits who influence our minds. But before I get too rosy-cheeked, let me recall. It was we who declared culture in the rising of bubbles, and it is we who draw lines between culture and rot. So what is fermented or rotten is a matter of thought. Here on the counter, a jar is pregnant with life, reminding us that no birth comes without labor. And that along with the bubbles come the toils and the troubles. While fermentation leavens and spoilage threatens, compost reincarnates, forming biological static between the frequencies of animal and vegetable, ready to be tuned into new life. Wriggling creatures form disassembly lines for humanity's leftovers. Worms traffic nutrients on slippery, writhing freeways. Whoa! I love worms! Give me the worms, give me the they worms! They follow bacteria's passage into the interior of a fruit, where crisp flesh melts into flux. A seasonal tempo emerges composting and composing. Disassembling and reassembling. Just like the, uh, Mushroom teleportation device, I thought. Fallen leaves are stripped down to reveal secret skeletons. Mm. 
A moment to feel bad about being alive? Life is crazy. Life is beautiful. We're meant to be positive. And their vivid rainbow pigments <laughs> fade into the black richness diverse, make it more diverse. of the forest floor. But compost soils more than just fruits and foliage. It claims creatures with blood, creatures with senses, creatures with mothers. And they too, the swarming multitudes, will invade. Devour. And rip apart. In the compost heap, I am fine with such violent disarray. But come my time to dissolve, I am far less brave. Habituated to this one body, anything else suggests oblivion. But the compost heap dreams of another option, to be wrought. That is, transformed. But is this transformation a caress, or is it violence? Metamorphosis or ruin. Oh, slime mold. The answer depends on where within Rot's vast network we stand. At times, rot is a feast, a multi-species melee of gorging, digesting, and excreting. Devoured by beetles, rotting flesh wriggles to life once more in a putrid Eucharist of feather, scale, and bone. Rot even offers a place for moments of rest. And togetherness. In a world obsessed with growth, we overlook these tender possibilities of decay. Oh, I want to decay. That soft and loving surface that will catch us when we fall. Disassemble us. And let us return together in new and vibrant flesh. But for now, this flesh 
is perishable. With each breath, we make a choice. What do we preserve? And what do we leave to rot? Leave the old world behind to rot and, and let us reincarnate out of the old world. Some things are hard to swallow, but when digested, allow for infinite becoming. As it is, we only have a taste. And once swallowed, we too are not dead. We are rot. I like it. Mushrooms growing out of you. I'm making some more of that. I am thirsty. I'll be back. I need to get some wild water. Witchcraft had, and continues to have, a subversive power. Its rise in the contemporary public eye is rooted in its potential to subvert, to create new relations between individual, nature, and society. But against these principles lies the construction of its universe, based on eternal symbols, and on maintaining spiritual status quo and hierarchies. This is potentially socially dangerous. Instead of the traditional tree, a better representation of this universe is mycelium, non-centralized, non-hierarchical, ever-changing, made modify our symbols and our minds.
I will learn from it simply and work with the scarcity of my home. I don't need to buy to thrive, nor I need to buy to make it thrive. To create a substrate for it, I disinfect and satisfy my utensils in the elements of water and fire. In a base of potato starch, I add flour to stabilize the gelatin and to add ceres to give fertility to my mycelium, sugar for its nourishment and to ask for the moon's blessings, named for Hecate's knowledge and for its potassium content. As the gelatin is ready, I can direct to the forest, home of the mycelium. When I find the correct place for it to grow, I will pick up my tools, made from scratches, and plant spores into the substrate. As I diffuse the spores to create the magical circle, I pray. O oh, Earth, the war more eruptive than a fungal growth after the rain and more diffused than a network of mycelium under an ancient forest. The whose names are synced by the growing living matter, whose power dances in every root and every leaf and every cell. As you birth your daughter Radia, to teach the commons how to dismantle the oppressive powers, accept me as one of your offspring, and teach me how to practice a never-changing witchcraft released from perpetual symbols and universal constrictions. As this mycelium grows in the nutrients both magical and biological that I offer it, its living force changes the sigil, giving it an unhierarchical and subversive power, no longer what it for millennia was, constantly different from itself. May that power bless my mind as well. May this be the start of a new way of practicing. From this, jars will be filled with mycelium, starters of most spells in an ever-growing research. And from the jars, with time and practice, new mushrooms will arise, making the process a continuous but continuously changing circle. New spore baskets will be made and undone, created from scratches and reused as scratches. New spells will be written, all spells will be changed. As this practice expands, may its impact on our lives expand as well. The practices we do shape our ideas and our ways of living. May the properties of the mycelium shape our ideas for good. I heard somewhere that the future of humanity will be feminine and probably not white. I think Mother Nature is feminine and well, I am feminine and I feel that a lot of these movies films actually yeah they do have a feminine quality to them even the ones made by more masculine people but I also have heard that people like to define mushrooms as genderless which I agree to a certain extent all of us have a bit of feminine and masculine qualities in us so I do feel sometimes I'm quite masculine and I get confused. Not necessarily that I think I'm actually a man, but you know, we're oscillating individuals probably between feminine and masculine. <clears throat> I feel like I oscillate anyway, and we all oscillate because we're part of nature, but I suppose, um, I'm excited for the new earth because although it's, you know, it's in swing now, right, it's very noticeable that it's happening. It hasn't settled yet, we're still oscillating. 
And I think there won't be a rest point for a good while. We're moving and growing like the slime mold, like mycelium, to somewhere new, unexplored territories. And it's going to be intense. Um, I'm trying to stay strong. Well, I suppose it's sort of ridiculous to stay strong, but I'll just persevere. So yeah, let's continue on. I only have a few more to go. Can you shut up? Throughout human history, there have been countless migrations. Usually they follow the seasons or a source of food. But when does a migration become a pilgrimage or a problem? I really need to be like fully present and fully alive and fully self-accepting to really explore what's meaningful. This is something I've been wanting to do for years and years, ever since learning about them. And these adventures helps me get into that state. On the Pacific coast of the Northwest United States, there is a secret annual event. And for some, it isn't secret enough. Since the discovery, like I said, everyone's been going to that small area and it's kind of been getting trampled and, and it's been hit pretty hard. <laughs> Especially with the internet kind of leaking all the information about it. I think the main thing is to develop your own relationship with the fungi. Inside the mycology community, the search for Psilocybe azurescens could be described as a rite of passage. So this is, is almost a, a quest that people do and um, just kind of congregating at this spot, this one specific spot at this one specific time of year to look for this one specific mushroom, Psilocybe azurescence. It grows one and only one place in the world, and that is. And it's become quite a mecca for people searching for those type of mushrooms. To chase this story that you hear from all of your mushroom hunting friends and, and see it for ourselves. We are going to explore the dynamic relationships that surround this highly coveted little brown mushroom. The context. The sand supply is in uh, dynamic balance with the vegetation. The ecology. I would presume it's a primary decomposer. And the fungi's role in society. And you have to be willing and able to step into the unknown. It completely changed my life. I know it might sound corny, but it's magical. It's like finding treasure, you know? You don't see them very often. Fred and Lucien are embarking on what has become a modern day quest for fire. And by doing so, they are now part of the problem and possibly the solution. Yeah, they sing good. songs about Johnny Appleseed. They don't sing songs about Johnny Sand Dune Grass Guy. <laughs> it's because the legend hasn't been born yet. It, they were first described growing from rotting wood on the banks of the river, and now they've uh, found to be growing really from rotting um, straw, if you will, at the base of tufts of beach grass. Uh, and the beach grasses are abundant. I mean, they're, they're the primary vegetation in this area, which, by the way, is introduced. It's not a native species. It's introduced from Europe by the settlers to uh, stabilize the dunes. All mammals have an impact on their environment but none are more disruptive than European colonists. They first started uh, building out uh, into the ocean, an early phase of, the, of jetty construction, followed by later phases that culminated uh, in about 1920. As a result, extra sand showed up on the beaches all the way down uh, to the south of the littoral cell to the city of Seaside. More sand started blowing into the dunes, and in fact, it blew in faster than the vegetation could handle it. It uh, advanced rampaging dune fields as much as um, a half a mile inland. It buried some farms. It destroyed grazing land, and that became the problem. And they were proposing, after trying several uh, species, uh, they pretty much settled with European beach grass. They also added uh, scotch prune, and those are two of the most invasive uh, plants in the county. The humans built the jetty, 
which then caused a sand problem so big they called it rampaging dunes. In classic human fashion, those colonists thought it would be a good idea to bring in two species of plant to help manage the sand. Two new colonists were introduced, Cytisus scoparius and Amophilia arenia, also known as scotch broom and European beach grass. This grass did the job it was intended to do, but maybe too well. It can cause a dune to grow vertically as much as two to three feet per winter and maybe as much as uh, 50 to 100 feet horizontally. The negative impacts of the European beach grass are the loss of nesting habitat for a snowy plover. It's a bird that, that lays its eggs on bare naked sand. There's so little op wide open space now because the beach grass occupies everything below, above uh, high tide line that, that's changed the, the area of nesting habitat from, a, from an area a mile wide to an area 200 feet wide. And so there's fewer snowy plovers as a result. As far south as Arcata, California, the European beach grass is causing problems for the ecosystems. In Arcata, they are already campaigning to remove it. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, removing the grass will help to save some ecosystems. Perhaps the most significant impact of the grass is its ability to displace entire native plant communities. The grass currently impacts six different federally listed endangered plants that occur on the coastal dunes of California. The jetty caused the sand, the sand caused the grass, and now the grass is problematic to the birds and local ecosystems. So what is to be done? It appears a solution is already in effect, and maybe it's too late to reconsider. If you're on a mushroom trip, you can't not stop for mushrooms when it looks good, but you have to be <laughs> judicious. Maximize your mushroom minutes. Yes, maximize <laughs> your mushroom minutes. This kind of uh, chanterelle, Cantharellus formosus, this is the habitat that it likes. The coastal young spruce forests, like plantation spruce, and it's also easy hunting because you can see everywhere. I mean a bright orange mushroom in the dark. A beacon exactly. of eat me. Uh, Chanterelle. This is so cute. Since their discovery back in, I think it was the 70s, they've been hunted pretty relentlessly because they survive in a very small habitat. It's when you get a lot of people that aren't really in the mycology world. It's, it's like, I, I encourage you to go out there, but know what you're doing first so you don't trample the whole area and destroy and litter and you'd be surprised how much garbage is out there now. Like, it's pretty crazy. You know, there were maybe 15 or 20 other folks out looking in the similar area. They were all after the Aziz. There's definitely an exponentially increasing interest in psilocybin-containing mushrooms, largely spawned by what some people refer to as the pollen effect, in reference to Michael Pollan's book, How to Change Your Mind. I think it's kind of more of a well-known thing now, especially in that area. The spot has been blown up, and there is another group of humans trying to save the fungi from over-harvesting. This group started on Facebook and calls itself Wood Lovers United. We're trying to find other places to inoculate and um, hopefully grow this, this in, a, in new places where people don't really know about it. That way we can kind of protect the species in a sense. A couple of times a year, this clandestine crew converges and conspires to propagate the species in the name of conservation. I mean, I do think overforaging can be a problem. Um, I, I definitely, if, if you're a mycologist and you're out there foraging, you should know not to take them all and to, you know, put a little back somehow. It has been well documented that fungi reproduce more from mycelium and animal assistance than from spore dispersal in the wind. Oh, a little mushroom. <laughs> what is it about this mushroom that compels people to this area to cause damage to the land and to risk over harvesting? What makes this species so special to humans? And it's uh, the psilocybe species with the highest concentration of hallucinogens known in terms of weight, you know, amount of hallucinogen per weight, even though these mushrooms are relatively small. When I first started in mycology about 45 years ago, there was 
we knew of three or four species on the west coast and now there's probably 25 or 30 that have been described. Well, here's where azurescence stands out. It's in other alkaloids, not psilocybin, not psilocin, it's in baocystin. And this is azurescence way over here, and cubensis is here. Now the blue is the psilocybin, and the red is the psilocin, and the little green one there is the baocystin. And you see, and this down here is the total of all of those. So azurescence, as believed in past research, is way stronger than all the others. And it's up here at 2.5% total. We need to do a lot more research with the baocystin and aeruginacin as well. So my wife and I basically realized that she was ready to move on. So she was ready to separate. Both my wife and I were you know, miserable at some level or another over all these years at, you know, different times. I thought I was doing all the right things leading me in the right direction, but they weren't leading me to be more content or happy. Everything I thought I was working towards really lost its meaning. And that led me to a place where I had to start really paying attention to how I find meaning and how that sort of develops into real interest and real passion. That's a number one. Is it? Yep. Got top. Got ri ripply top? Top grade. Really? Smell it. Oh my God. I mean, I've le been led down all of these different paths to try to get closer and closer to finding and living more meaningfully, I guess is the word. You know, it's the new exciting start to the next phase in life. It's about what happens to our relationships with other people, with our communities, with the planet, as we begin to heal as people. And you can see in the clinical trials that loved ones that surround the people who go through these experiences report that their relationships with those people improve psilocybin containing mushrooms as well as really an infinite number of other plant medicines have been used for thousands of years since time immemorial by indigenous communities all around the world. Psilocybin was already showing a lot of promise for treating alcohol use disorder, nicotine dependency, end of life distress, anxiety, depression, and a lot of other conditions prior to Richard Nixon signing the Controlled Substances Act. Thing that comes to mind to me is their potential to disrupt our current mental health epidemics. 20 plus years ago, um, I got very badly injured, um, technically disabled. I had massive um, PTSD uh, symptoms after that, extreme, uh, so like an extreme introvert. And because of the pain, I had to get on pain management programs, which entailed heavy opiate use, which they told me in the beginning would be like six months and I'd get off of it, but it just turned into like a 20 year opiate addiction. It, it hurt my life in so many ways. In the back of the High Times magazines, there was these grow kits from Homestead. But you know, I gotta try this again. It's been so long. It completely changed my life. It just took all my fears, phobias, introvertedness, like, and it just allowed me to kind of digest everything that had been happening to me and everything that I had basically been hurting myself with. It basically allowed me to take a step back from myself and kind of examine myself and my situation and be like, what the, what am I doing? You know, like, it's been so long, I could try harder than this. And like, it just, and plus other things like um, the way I treated my friends and family. And it just, it made me realize a lot of things and it was very profound. And after that, I had to grow it myself. I wanted to develop my own relationship with the fungi. Doma pioneered the antibiotic fusion technique that changed the Cubensis grow game. His hybrid strain, Tidal Wave 2, won the first psilocybin cup and led to other cultivars producing award-winning strains like Enigma. 
This fusion technique significantly increases the amount of active alkaloids and is setting a new standard for potency. Mushrooms can vary greatly in potency from very, very low to very, very high. Of the same species, cubensis can be like one milligram per gram, or it could be 40 milligrams, or 38 milligrams per gram was our highest test. That's 38 times difference. Now, you can't just go tell somebody, go take a gram of mushrooms, not knowing if it's one milligram of active alkaloids in a gram, or if it's 38 milligrams of active alkaloids in a gram. So for safety reasons, harm prevention, we put our face out there, we put our name out there because we're, we're doing this so that people know how to dose. Because I believe the medicine is going to be legalized. I think more people need to stand up like me and do this so that people can take notice and realize that um, we're not fooling around. We like to say at Double Blind that psychedelics are not a panacea. They're not going to fix all of your problems overnight. And they're not for everybody. We encourage people to approach the medicine with reverence and with intention. And that's not to say that you can't like do mushrooms at a festival or have sex on mushrooms or microdose or like laugh your ass off with your friends. Like there's no demonization of joy or celebration or dance or, or revelry because that can all be really healing and beautiful too. Shelby's magazine, Double Blind, is another critical resource as psychedelics move more into the mainstream. Having accurate information is as important as accurate potency testing. We catch up with our pilgrims, struggling between making miles on their long drive and hunting mushrooms that are littering the roadside. When I'm hunting or mushroom hunting or foraging, I feel like I'm in my element to some degree, like I feel like I'm in a state of flow. We're noticing in this totally abundant forest that mushroom hunting is so abundant and so easy that you don't actually have to look in the forest. People just leave them on the side of the road for you. You know, like that's unheard of for an umbilicata. In my experience, this size, this is why you cut and don't pull. See all those little babies that now don't have a chance to form? So what are you, you're what are you a cutter, do? not a plucker? No, I'm a plucker for sure, but this that's what the answer would be when people are like, no, you have to cut all the babies. But Eat the babies. Exactly. <laughs> we made it. Azzy Quest Day 2. Long drive. Well, that was the challenge coming here, is not stopping for all the mushrooms that we saw along the way. It took us a long time to get here. And we're going to head out into the night for our first official Azzy hunt with our, whatever these things are, flashlights. Hoping they fluoresce. Something really cool. It's, it's either trash or a mushroom. I think it's, it's either a... Get the real light on it. It's a, it's a tennis ball. <laughs> tennis, it's a tennis ball. As it turns out, Azzies do not fluoresce. Yeah, that's cool. Oregon last year, 2020, I believe, decriminalized psilocybe mushrooms, so conditions are good. There was a lot of talk about, you know, how does this affect this kind of activity? Um, it still felt you know, like we were doing something illegal, which maybe we were, I'm not even sure. So I hide my identity because it's technically still illegal. <laughs> I love what I do, but I'm not trying to go to jail. Why are mushrooms still considered illegal in most of the US? In the 1970s, Nixon's war on drugs set the stage. But this was actually just a front for associating African-Americans with heroin and hippies with cannabis so he could further disrupt those communities. In the U.S., federally, this medicine is still considered a Schedule One narcotic, the same category as heroin and cocaine. They have to deschedule, get the crim, they have to deschedule. Schedule One means it is highly addictive and has no medicinal purpose, both of which is patently untrue when it comes to psilocybin and psilocin. 
Decriminalization of psilocybin in the United States began with Denver, becoming the first city in May 2019. As of the making of this film in 2022, the cities of Oakland, Santa Cruz, Washington, D.C., Ann Arbor, Chicago, Detroit, Somerville, Cambridge, Northampton, Seattle, and San Francisco have all followed suit. Oregon, Connecticut, Maine, New Jersey, and Texas have all decriminalized psychedelics in some form. In November of 2022, the state of Colorado votes on Prop 122 that proposes to decriminalize magic mushrooms, DMT, mescaline, and ibogaine, and then make those compounds only available in treatment centers under supervision. There is no indication that activists are going to stop pushing for decriminalization, and there's no indication either that millions of dollars are going to stop being poured into drug development to try to get psychedelics through the FDA approval process. Like, both of these things are already happening and are going to continue to happen. And so the question is, like, how do we structure it in such a way that the most number of people who want access to psychedelics can get them? This genus of mushroom has literally captured our imagination. And once something grabs our psyche, it is remiss to let go. They are connecting people with something that's greater than themselves and inspiring what is sometimes referred to in the context of clinical trials as a mystical experience. Nothing is more powerful than an idea whose time has come. After two days travel, we arrive at the hunting grounds, full of anticipation, but not sure what to expect. So here we are, it's like 9.15, the first real day of Azzy hunting. We're probably four minutes in, maybe. And then right here, right at the side of this little deer trail, deer trail, we got it, we got it. Beautiful cluster, we pick these things gently. So I don't know what these are, but I don't think these are actually Azzy's. As time goes on, it's going to become more and more and more popular for people to come and collect them. That collection is going to be concentrated into this very small geographic area, and that, of course, is going to have an impact. Um, you know, we don't want it. We don't want that many people doing this in one tiny area. The one tiny area you can go to, where perhaps it is, um, you know has been decriminalized but so ethically um I, I suppose one one should probably try not to spread unwelcome species as much as possible the get together we did with woodlovers united uh, my mushrooms group is basically we get as much spawn as we can um and we we take it to places where we think the spawn will thrive. They have similar materials like grass and some scotch broom and stuff. We take it there, we plant it, and we hope that it thrives. We'll be coming back in probably a year, maybe two, to check on it, see what's happening. Um, I believe we inoculated the area with a little over 50 gallons of spawn, I would say. The idea behind it is to help spread spawn for a, a psilocybe species, psilocybe is sense, and try to basically revitalize them. The more this can be propagated into the world, you know, increase the geographic area where these can be found, um, I, think the, I think the better. I wouldn't presume it's a primary decomposer, as many fungi are. In other words, it takes biological material, in this case, the rotting straw or stems left from the beach grass and decomposes it. Once the grasses start to decompose and compost, uh, they hold moisture differently, and new plants that couldn't grow in an area where the sand was actively accumulating around the beach grasses now can because there's a, a moist uh, compost bed. And it, it, in some places, it takes about 40 years. The compost will turn into topsoil, black topsoil. So there's an evolution of the soils that takes place through time. 
So the fungi break it down and then bacteria break down the fungi and that's kind of how things cycle through the environment. If it wasn't for the fungi, we'd be up to our butts and you know what. You know, nobody's entirely sure where these things originated anyway. Moving species around can have unintended consequences. Um, you know, we, as humans, we do that all the time, right? Either inadvertently or purposefully. And we tend to choose the ones that we feel will benefit us individually or as a species or a society, what have you, as the ones that we tend to, to propagate and spread around. Yeah. I think this fits in that category. It's a toss-up where you want to draw the line when it comes to classically calling it uh, ethics. Spreading the fungus in it, uh, into unwelcome invasive species makes kind of some sense, as long as there isn't some negative unexpected consequence of it. It sounds like uh, an act of genius. Well, and the dunes that we took them out of are actually full of invasive species already. Very true. And between us, we can think of a bunch of other Eastern Pacific dune grass ecosystems with all of the same conditions, but they don't have the psilocybe as their in them. So they may support them just fine. Usually they grow in certain areas for a reason because of everything else that's around. Due to the tiny geographic area where this species is found, the human foraging impact of harvesting and general use is highly concentrated. The Woodlovers United group is trying to relieve some of that pressure by spreading the species into similar habitats. The systemic propagation of this fungi has the potential to mitigate the beach grass and build topsoil for other flora and fauna to even have a chance. more like it. It has the little veil there. We'll see if it starts bruising blue. Definitely the stipe feels more like it. This is <laughs> epic. This is a like a freaking like the accomplishment of the quest. We found the promised land. And it's right there. <laughs> nope. They scare me. These four here, the stem is much more frangible, breakable. It's thicker. It's not as white. It has those brown and white, the brown striations coming through the stipe, the, the white color of the stipe. Um, you know, kind of looks like bruising, but it's not really. But then, if you compare it to these ones, lighter, more caramel colored cap the rounder shape of the cap the stem is thinner and much tougher so it's almost almost woody really tough stem and these ones i expect will start to show blue you can see a little bit of blue bluesing there already these ones will not these were growing side by side very much lookalikes i like that bluesing the bluesing it's all about the blues oh my god Oh my God. Beautiful. There's a lot of effort just paid off in satisfaction. Like, I honestly really don't care at all about the mushrooms, <laughs> but it's really rad to find them when you've been trying. So, yeah, I'm stoked. I'm super stoked. Look at that. And what I've been reflecting on is, um, you know, how my activities and actions and thinking generate motivation, lead to enough motivation to take action and do something in hopes of finding like a, a motivational feedback loop that creates real passion and interest in something. And, you know, I'm in a part of my life where I'm sort of letting go of a lot of previous uh, activities, careers, motivations, and trying to find this, uh, I don't know, a way to live as fully as possible in any, in any 
given moment. And it's, uh, I think it comes down to, um, you know, having an open mind and being present and putting effort into things so that you can have the full range of, uh, you know, appreciation and satisfaction and Meaning? Meaning. Looking for meaning. The quest for meaning <laughs> and passion. Uh, yeah. I guess it just feels good to actually do something you put a lot of, or f find something, or finish something, or complete something that you put a lot of effort into. And uh, when the sun, co sun comes out on a dark November day, <laughs> it's really beautiful seems like it's a, a worthy endeavor. Two things are for sure. More research is needed to understand these relationships, and the interest in this mushroom will not go away anytime soon. As this medicine is appropriated into our culture and society, perhaps it will open the door to more healing, more empirical data, and more understanding of its role in our lives, and the crucial role fungi play in the environment. Stem butt from one fruit body. You can see it's um, got the mycelial threads there. And I'm going to, I pulled it off in order to place it and plant it in another zone just to spread the mycelium because um, that's the sustainable ecological way, you know, you gotta propagate as a harvest. And uh, especially as this place blows up. You know, I am a symptom of its uh, spreading knowledge. That's it. That's the Fungi Film Festival. Wow. I really liked the last one. It was very in-depth, very long. And it definitely highlighted the importance of not overpicking and maybe like if you're interested in mushrooms and microdosing to try grow your own because it's going to be a little bit of a time until it's available to the public in, in medicinal ways. And growing them is, growing mushrooms in general is just like a really humbling spiritual experience because they take so long and you saw, you like, you're, you come, you kind of become with them and tranced by them. Um, I got a little bit obsessed and like worried, but I, since then I've learned to trust that when the time is good and it's the right time that they will they'll be beautiful and they'll grow just as necessary. Wow. I hope you enjoyed watching with me and um, I'm going to try pick the highlights. I like the one with the, the dudes in the cabin and uh, and the animated one with the when it's on her arm because I resonate with that one a lot. I've been drawing some 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 doodles, I guess. 
yeah thank you for watching let me know if you want me to just put the whole thing online I might have to ask for permission I might not who knows uh, maybe I'll put it on and then I'll ask for permission <laughs> I don't know uh, support the film festival if you can I'll probably be uploading this when it's not available anymore so it doesn't really matter if you support them this year Actually, no, it'll be 2023. It's not 2023 for me yet, but support them in the next year. I would, I'm totally do it again. I would actually go out to Oregon if I could. And mushrooms just make me so much happier. I feel much better. I'm watching a bunch of mushroom videos. <laughs> I hope your day is well. subscribe if you like me like if you like mushrooms like the video if you like mushrooms and want to spread the mycelium in the matrix in the digital matrix instead of the, the mycelium matrix and uh i love you goodbye <laughs>